If you do not know exactly how to place a trade like this one using what I refer to as the shallow pullback strategy, then you need to watch this video. Pullback trading is one of the best and easiest ways to make money in any financial market. But if you cannot create a rules-based strategy around pullbacks, then you're just going to be trading based on a bunch of inconsistent crap and hoping to catch the next big move out of price. And your trading account is going to reflect that. There is not one consistently profitable trader that trades based around hope. But if you can master pullbacks and find a consistent way to trade them that makes money over time, then that might just be exactly what you need to take your trading to the moon. And that is why in today's video, I want to show you my top three pullback trading strategies in hopes that it'll help you get a little closer to your goal of becoming a consistently profitable trader. So if that sounds like something you'll enjoy, make sure you do a couple of things for me. Go ahead and smash that like button to help out with the YouTube algorithm. Go ahead and hit subscribe if you are new because we come out with content like this each and every week. And I'll see you right after the intro and disclaimer. So the first thing we need to discuss when we're talking about pullbacks is go through a brief explanation of what pullbacks actually are. So in a trending market, what we will see is something like what you see currently on the screen right now. And what we see in a trending market are impulsive moves like this one, followed by brief periods of exhaustion, retracements, a little bit of relief from that impulsive move, these are called pullbacks. These pullbacks can be caused by either sellers trying to step in from this area thinking they can push the market even further down or by buyers that were in on this move taking some profit. But inevitably, if this trend is going to continue, then we will see this trend make a higher low followed by a higher high that will yet again be followed by the same thing. It'll be followed by buyers taking profit, sellers trying to step in and push the market further down, and that will cause another pullback. These are what we call the pullbacks in the market. Now, pullbacks come in a variety of shapes and sizes, but there are three main pullbacks we're going to focus on today. They are the shallow pullback, and we're going to talk about strategies for today. They are the shallow pullback, the medium pullback, and the deep pullback. So, First off, a shallow pullback. Let's start with that one. A shallow pullback is this one you see right here. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a pullback that's not big. It's a small retracement. And the way we're gonna define a shallow pullback is if a pullback does not reach the previous resistance level before the market breaks into new highs, then that is considered our shallow pullback. I'm gonna breeze through this pretty quickly. We're gonna look at it on a chart, so don't worry if you get a little confused during this brief explanation right here. What would a medium pullback be? A medium pullback is after we see the breaking close above a high, we see our impulsive move here, we see our pullback, and that pullback comes into the previous level of resistance. All of these are gonna be based around price itself. So whenever this pullback makes it down to this level of previous resistance or support that was broken depending on the trend. This is an uptrend, so it's gonna be previous resistance turned to support. This is gonna be our medium pullback. And a deep pullback is when the market breaks into new highs like we have right here from our previous resistance level, breaks into new highs, higher high right up here. And then the pullback makes it all the way down to the previous support level of the previous pullback. So let me explain that really briefly. Here was our previous pullback. Here's the lowest level of that previous pullback when price breaks into new highs and then retraces all the way back down to that lower level. That's what we're going to call a medium, excuse me, a deep pullback. So what we're going to do today is discuss a strategy or strategies you can use with all three of these pullback types. So let's dive into that first by talking about the shallow pullback strategy. So here we are on a whiteboard and I'm going to briefly go over the shallow pullback strategy. Then we're going to take a look at it on some charts and we're going to dive deep into all the rules around this strategy. So with the shallow pullback strategy, what we're waiting for is to see a pullback that does not touch the previous resistance level that was broken in an uptrend. We'll go through bearish examples as well. But if we get a pullback that does not touch that previous resistance level at all, then what we have is a shallow pullback. On shallow pullbacks, the best way I have found to trade them is by trading breakouts of this resistance level 
after that pullback. So that pullback happens. We don't touch the previous resistance level. The market pushes higher, going into higher highs. As we break out of this previous resistance level here is when I want to start looking for trades. I'm looking for those trades based on the close of the breakout candle. Again, I'm just trying to show you the concept. We'll go down to charts and talk about it in just a second. But as long as this stays true, I want to buy that. My stop loss is probably going somewhere below that swing low with a target at like a one to one, 1 1.4 to one, two to one, whatever we decide to do for targets. And with this being the case, try to spot as many of these shallow pullback strategies that you can. I've actually already pointed them out for you. Hopefully you already saw this. As this market starts to push down, we create a low, a lower low, right? Here's our lower low from our previous low. And now when we get this pullback, does it touch our previous level of support? This would be a bearish example. It does not. So how would we be trading this? We would be trading the breakout of that support level right here. The breakout of that level since this resistance level, since our pullback, did not make it back up to the previous support level, that's signaling that we need to trade breakouts. And again, we're going over all the rules in just a second. One more example right here though, we break above resistance, the pullback doesn't make it to that resistance, therefore I'm trading breakouts of this level, expecting new higher highs to form. Okay, so now let's go over to some charts on the dollar yen and take a look at some real examples of this on some real charts. All right, so on the dollar yen right in front of you, we have a bullish example of the shallow pullback strategy. See if you can spot it. Hopefully you were able to spot this shallow pullback right here. We have a market breaking into new highs. We have a high, a pullback, a brand new high, and this pullback does not touch this resistance level at all, right? And then we see a breakout of this resistance level. So to explain the entire entry format, that was the conditions. When we're, when we're building a strategy, and again, you want rules around all of your strategies. When we're building a strategy like this, we want to have conditions and entries. Our conditions, and we want to have stops and targets. This is what I call CEST. But our conditions are already set, right? We have a condition of we want to see a pullback that doesn't touch the previous resistance level for a bullish shallow pullback. What's our next step? If we're doing CEST, it's our entry. So let's discuss the entry now. The entry after we see that shallow pullback that does not touch the previous resistance level is a close above the body of the previous resistance level. The breakout candle that closed, not the high up here, but the bodies of the candles of that swing high. When I get a break and close candle, like this big green one here, above this line, our bodies of the previous swing high, that is my entry candle. So our trade setup at this point, if I bring out my position tool, it would look like that. We would have a stop loss below the swing low. And there's a couple of ways we're going to talk about stops and targets. We'll do that momentarily. Stop loss below the swing low. Let's say we wanted a 1.4 to 1 reward to risk ratio. That's what I constantly go for or go for a lot in my own trading strategies. So that's our trade setup. Let's see what happens. We push down. Do not hit our stop loss though. We then continue pushing higher, higher, and eventually hit targets here on this shallow pullback trade. So that is a bullish example. Let's now go take a look at a bearish example. And then I'm going to show you some testing I've done with this throughout 2021 on the dollar yen. First though, let's look at a bearish example of the shallow pullback strategy. We are again on the dollar yen chart. See if you can spot a bearish shallow pullback. Hopefully you were able to say this one. Why? Because this pullback does not reach the previous level of support that was broken. So we're looking at that previous level support. We want to put a line on the wicks of the lows of this level that shows us the lowest low of that previous level of support. And as long as we get a move that breaks through that low and the pullback after that impulsive move that breaks through that low does not touch this area, then we have a shallow pullback. When we have a shallow pullback, we're going to be waiting for the market to break and close below the bodies of the swing low before that pullback. So with that being the case, where would our entry candle be? Right here, right? So we would have an entry that looks something like this. Entry on the close of that candle, stop loss above the swing high, right there, 1.4 easily hit. And I want you to look again now and see if you see another shallow pullback. So what we're counting as a pullback with this exact strategy is just one candle pulling back. So hopefully with that being the case, you were able to spot this. What we have is a push down. If we count this as our pullback, we got nowhere near 
our previous low. So with that being the case, we can put a horizontal line at the bottom of the bodies of that swing low, making this our entry candle and making this another winning trade with our entry at the close of that candle, stop loss above the swing high of that candle and targets down here. Now I'm gonna explain stops and targets in a second, but I wanna show you guys the results from the beginning of 2021 here on the dollar yen, trading exactly what I've just shown you. Again, we're gonna go over stops and targets in just a second, then we'll move on to the other two pullback strategies I'm gonna teach you in this video. Let's go ahead and move on now though to the results of 2021 on the dollar yen. Okay, so here we are taking a look at the results from 2021. This is just how it performed in 2021. So before we even get started looking at these results, you need to go and back test. Once I give you the stops and targets, do not just take that, go out and start trading it. You will likely, and I mean very likely, lose money. The reason is because you don't you don't have this optimized in any way. You don't know what pairs it performs best on, what time frames it performs best on, what time of day it performs best on. You have no idea about any of the nuance rules. I don't have time to go over in this video that you have to put in the work to figure out throughout your back testing process. You don't know the max drawdown it comes with, the max losing trades in a row. There is so much more that goes into trading than what most beginners think, which is why I wanna explain that before I even show you these results. And also, when I show you these results, understand the dollar yen, is a pair known historically for trending really well. Understand that in 2021, we've had very trending markets so far. And this, my friends, is a trend continuation strategy. I say all that to make sure you understand that you need to do your own back testing whenever you see strategies from me or anyone else. You may just not be as, and I'm not gonna say as good, you may not see the market the same as me in terms of swing highs and lows. That could affect the performance of this strategy as well. But this is the results I've gotten with this strategy throughout 2021. And I'm showing you the best pair in terms of the results I got in 2021. That's the dollar yen. Now let's dive into the results. So here on the dollar yen, Throughout 2021, I used a 1.4 to 1 reward to risk ratio. I had 18 wins, 11 losses, giving me a 62% uh, win rate and a 28.4% ROI, excluding spreads and commissions. So pretty much in the year of 2021, this type of trading has performed really well. Again, 2021 has been insanely trendy so far, but uh, again, that's why I want to make sure you understand that just because you see really good results like this, it doesn't mean you can take this, go start trading it, even after I give you the stops and targets, and expect to make 62% win rate all the time. Okay, go do your own testing. I am not here to give you the castle. I'm here to give you keys to the castle, like strategies like this one, and it's your job to go find the castle, to go back test. That was a weird analogy, but to go back test, create your risk management plan based on your risk tolerance, do all the things that professional traders do. If you wanna be a professional trader, you know what you should do? start acting like a professional trader. Do you think professional traders just go out here and start trading because they learned a strategy on YouTube and that's what they wanna do? I can tell you from experience, no. A lot, two hours of my day right now as a professional trader that makes a lot of money from trading, two hours of my day is still spent back testing strategies and optimizing the strategies I already have. It's not the dream lifestyle everybody's selling when they're trying to sell you a course and telling you you're just going to the Lamborghini dealership every other week to buy your new car and you're going on vacation every week. That's, I don't know what these people are really doing, but as a professional trader that has an education business, TTC, the trading channel as well, I could never find the time to even go to the dealership if I wanted a Lamborghini. But anyway, I digress. Those were the results. Let's now look at a few of the trades randomly so that I can show you a couple of other examples and show you that each of these was based on exactly what you're learning in this video. So here we have a winning trade. Also, right now we're gonna talk about stops and targets. Here we have a winning trade. Can you tell me why? Actually, let's look at this losing trade first. So here's a losing trade. Let's take a look at it and see what happened. We had what? We had a breakout of this level, pushing higher. We then have a pullback that does not come down to these highs, right? With all of that coming together, our breakout, our pullback not reaching the highs of our previous resistance level, what is the way that we trade now? The way we enter is by the breakout candle that closes above the bodies of the swing high candle. That would be right here. So in this case, this is what our trade setup would look like. And let me go ahead and explain stops and targets while I'm here. So after the entry, my stop loss, keep I kept things very, very simple, is one ATR 
below the entry candle for a bullish trade and above the entry candle for a bearish trade. One ATR, and if you don't understand what ATR is, it's average true range. I have a full video on it up here. Essentially, it gives you the average movement of the last 14 candles. That way you can stay in line with the currency pair volatility, the volatility of the currency pair time frame and market that you're trading. So with this being the case, the ATR of that candle, which you can see if you look right up here, is our entry candle is 12 pips. So I would have a stop loss below this candle by 12 pips. If I go to the low of that candle, it's 17 pips. I add my 12 to that. I have 29 pips as my stop loss. And I would have a 1.4 to one reward to risk. That's the way I traded this just based on that stop loss is a 1.4 to one reward to risk for the targets. So that's what the trade setup would look like. As you can see, this ended up being what? A losing trade. So instead of showing you this next win, I actually wanna show you a bearish example of stops and targets. So let's go to our next bearish trade and take a look at that. I'll just go ahead and scroll out so I can see it. A lot of uptrends here. Okay, next bearish trade ended up being a loss too, but that's okay, you guys need to understand, even though I'm showing you stops and targets and you're seeing losses, you need to understand that you're going to lose sometimes as well. That's part of trading. So let me move our vertical line out of the way really quickly and see if you can spot this bad boy. Where's our shallow pullback? We have a push down, breaking below, previous support. Here's the line of our previous support level. I know that looked like it touched it, but it did not. So since our pullback from our swing low up does not touch the previous swing low, what does that mean? That means we have a shallow pullback. And if we have a shallow pullback, according to the rules of the strategy we're talking about right now, we're trading the candle that closes below this body, the body of the, the lowest body of the previous swing low. That candle happens to be right here. So our entry would be at the close of that candle and our stop loss would be one ATR above this, this candle. One ATR above there. So the ATR right now is 13 pips at the time of that candle. Up to the swing high, we have about 13 pips. So it'd be a 26 pip stop loss. As you can see, we are barely stopped out before. Again, our target's 1.4. This is just what it would look like on a bearish trade. As you can see, those stops hit before the market took off barely and the market then takes off to the downside although we were out of the trade would have hit our targets if we would not have seen this price move but guess what guys that happens in trading you're going to have losses your job as a trader is not to win every trade is to set yourself up with a statistic advantage where you can make money over large sample sizes over a long period of time that's what we're going after as traders so that was the stops and targets and the entire strategy for the shallow pullback. The next thing we're going to take a look at is a strategy for the medium pullback, and then we'll move on to a strategy for the deep pullback. They will not take near as long because they're nowhere near as complicated of strategies. So let's go ahead and dive into the medium pullback strategy right now. So for the medium pullback strategy, what we're looking at is a market that's in trend, right? We have a market, let's say, that's making new higher highs and higher lows. We know for now, at least, that we have a higher high right here. For this pullback to be a medium pullback, what do we say needs to happen? The pullback needs to touch the previous resistance level. And the resistance level is not going to be a line. We're going to have a zone there, right? In that zone is where we're trying to buy on a bullish trade using the medium pullback. We're trying to capture the bottom of this pullback some. How And how we're going to do that is by expecting this level of resistance to hold in this trend continuation play and expecting it to cause this nice bounce. Will we be right every time? No, of course not. But can it help give us a statistic advantage that can make money over time? Yes. If we do it correctly, create rules around it, and we're consistent to those rules if those rules make money over time. So let me share with you the full strategy in detail. But first, I want you to see if you can look at the chart and spot a medium pullback by what you're looking at. Does this look familiar? Low to high, high to low, and a new higher high. We literally just drew this, right? And when we were drawing it out, we said what? The pullback needs to hit this high, and we're gonna have a zone. It's not just going to be one line, it's a zone of structure. If the pullback gets to that area, then we have a medium pullback, and we're looking for that level to push the market higher into new highs. Now the entries, that's our that's our total conditions, right? Every time we, we want to trade a strategy, create a strategy, we need to look at it like C-E-S-T. 
which stands for conditions, entries, stops, and targets. There's paper in my way, hold on. And with that being the case, with, with us going from the C, currently our conditions are met. We have a new higher high, we have a pullback into previous resistance. That's our conditions completely. What, what's our next step? Entries, what, what are we gonna use for possible entries? Depending on how far along the trend is, I have different entries that I don't have time to explain in this video, but I did a video a couple of weeks ago called the break or the only break and retest video you ever need to see. And that video will be linked in the top right hand corner of the screen. So I don't have time in this video to go through all of them, but essentially we have three different entries we can use. We have the most aggressive, uh, a semi-conservative entry and the most conservative entry. I'm going to explain those to the best of my ability. Now, the most aggressive entry on something like this, and there's a lot of different factors. Again, uh, reference that video in the top right hand corner of the screen. If you want to know all these factors, the most aggressive way to enter this is once the market gets to my zone of previous resistance, looking for a green candle for a bullish trade and a red candle for a bearish trade. I know that sounds crazy and you're like, well, how could that ever be profitable? But in the right situations that can give you a, a possible profitable outcome, which is awesome. So this is the most aggressive way. What this is going to do is get you in a lot more trades. It's not going to be as accurate as using something like candlesticks or candlestick patterns or price action patterns, but you're going to have a huge frequency of trades. Okay. So that's the benefit of being extremely aggressive. Now let's move on to a more conservative entry. And to do that, we're actually going to look right here. A more conservative entry would be waiting for something like what we call a close above candle. Let me zoom in on this. So here is what I would call a close above candle. The reason is just simply because we have a candle that closes above the high of the previous candle. This would be the second most aggressive, but the more conservative way to enter is instead of just waiting on a green candle of any kind, we would be waiting on a close above candle to show us momentum. These types of candles show you that buyers could possibly be taking control from a certain area. Another type of candlestick pattern that you can use the still the conservative but not most conservative entry would be a hammer candle or upside down shooting star. I don't care what you call it. I call it a 38.2 candle and the reason is because of the way I identify these. The way I identified this candlestick pattern is with a Fibonacci retracement from the low of the candle to the high of the candle. As long as the body of the candle, the entire body is above the 38.2% retracement then I have what I call a 38.2 candle. That's another candlestick pattern I like to use. So we have the most aggressive way to enter, which is just a color change candle or green candle for an uptrend, red candle for a downtrend. Once all of our conditions are met and we're in our zone, we have a more conservative way than that using candlestick patterns like the 382 or the close above candle. Now, what's the most conservative way to enter these trades? Well, it's to wait on the market to get into this zone and then to drop down to a smaller time frame like the four hour or one hour chart currently we're on a one hour chart of exactly where we were just looking and wait for things like double bottoms price action patterns on smaller time frames are the most conservative way to enter and they're going to give you the most accuracy by far but something to think about remember the most aggressive way just waiting on a color change candle that's going to give you a huge frequency of trades. If you're waiting on the most conservative way to enter, like for example, this double bottom we have right here, entry, stop, target. In this case, you're not going to get hardly any trades. Your frequency is going to be more than cut in half, probably more than cut in a quarter compared to just waiting on that color change candle, like waiting on a green candle in this zone when looking at a bullish trade. So those are things to keep in mind. Those are the three entries in terms of stops and targets for, for me, what I do is normally just keep my stops below whatever the low of the candle I enter on is, or in the case of price action patterns, my stop loss is below that price action pattern. And you know, my target 1.4 to one reward to risk ratio. So we don't have to dive too deep into that. But now that we've taken a look at a medium pullback, and again, if there was anything about that, you didn't understand, I'm crunched for time right now. I actually have a meeting to get to, but there is a video called the only break and retest video you'll ever need to see or something like that in the top right hand corner of the screen where I go into full detail of the medium pullback in terms of stops, targets, 
the entries. It's a lot more detailed of a video. Check that out if you have any more questions. Now though, let's dive into the deep retracement. Now the entries and stops are gonna be exactly the same. So what I wanna do is just explain on a chart what this looks like to make sure you understand it. We have a trending market, right? And then we see something like this. And eventually we run out of enough steam for the market to come back and retest this previous support level. Sellers have really taken control from up here and a lot of people took profit because we've had a lot of bull runs, right? So a lot of people take profit, we get all the way down into this area. This is kind of a last chance area for buyers to step in before this trend reverses and goes down. So with that being the case, this is an area I like to look for potential trading opportunities. Again, same exact entries. We have our aggressive with a color change. We have our candlestick patterns and price action patterns on a smaller time frame. But once we get to this level, what we're expecting is the market to push up and at least retest this level to create a double top, possibly continue in the uptrend or push down. We don't really care. We just want enough movement out of price to hit our initial targets. So with that being the case, I want you to look at the chart now. Can you spot a deep pullback. Hopefully you said yes. Right now what we have is a push up, our pullback, our break into new highs, and a pullback that comes into the previous level of support. And in this particular example, we have a nice close above candle directly afterwards. That would be our entry candle, stops, targets. You already know all that because we just talked about it. That, my friends, is three different pullback strategies you can take and test throughout historic data. Don't forget that part. See if you want to include them into your trading plan. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to go ahead and click that like button and subscribe if you want some more advanced content from us, including the strategies I use on a daily basis, including priority email, which is pretty much mentorship from me. I spend about three hours a day answering student emails. If you will have questions about the Forex market or about the training in general, then I'll be there for you as a mentor to help you out in any way that I can. The EAP training program also comes with three to five email alerts per week. The Pro Trader Report giving out my zones and so much more. The best part though, by far, is the fact that it comes with a 60 day money back guarantee, meaning at any point for any reason within the first 60 days, you're a part of the course, you decide you don't want it anymore, shoot my support staff an email and they will get you refunded ASAP. Other than that, again, be sure that you are back testing. Be sure you understand this, which is what I call the triangle of trading success. I talk about this in almost every video, so that should tell you how important it is. In order to be a profitable trader and start making money, there are three things in your trading you will have to master. There's the strategy you're going to trade. It has to be a strategy that one, makes money over time, and that two, is rules-based enough for you to be consistent to. You have to have a solid risk management plan, this risk management plan is what's going to keep you initially from blowing your account and keep you from getting super emotional when you go through periods of drawdown and start losing a few trades in a row, which by the way, happens with every single strategy you trade, happens to every trader. The difference between a novice trader and a professional is that a professional trader has a risk management plan in place that makes them emotionally okay during those periods of losses and those periods of drawdown. You also need the discipline to stick to these things, that back testing process we were talking about. And demo trading, those are the ways you gain this discipline and confidence enough to stick to your strategy and to stick to your risk management plan. I really hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments about the video, you can leave them below. I probably won't answer them. I do look at every comment though. I just don't have time to go through and answer every single one of them and they give me ideas for future videos. So feel free to comment any ideas you have for future videos. Click that like button. Make sure you're subscribed here if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next video. Talk soon.